Hi everyone, my name is Patrice Lambert from King's College London and this is the video presentation of my paper titled Design, Modeling and Implementation of a 7 duff Cable Driven Haptic Device with a Configurable Cable Platform. My co-authors are Lyndon Dacruz from University College London and Christos Bergelius also from King's College London. So when you use an impedance control haptic device, you provide position control to a virtual or a remote environment and you receive force feedback from this environment. You want your device to be light because you don't want the inertia of the device to disturb the rendered forces. But you also want it to be stiff such that the device can mechanically present high frequency content forces. So that's why parallel robots have been increasingly used as haptic device because they present a better stiffness inertia ratio than their serial counterparts. Cable-driven haptic device is a type of parallel robot, but in this case the cable connects the end effector to motorize at the reels located on the base frame. And they have been also studied as a potential haptic device. However, cable-driven robots generally do not provide grasping capabilities. And there has been limited research that have been conducted on a cable robot that can provide additional grasping. So in this article, we propose a novel general purpose haptic device that is lightweight because it is based on the cable driven robotic architecture and that provide one duff grasping uh, capability in addition to full six duff manipulation. And this is possible thanks to the main innovation, which is uh, the integration of a cable configurable platform to provide the pinch grasping. So here on the left, you see the cable platform. It is made of 10 passive cables. And the way you interact with it is that you use the palm of your hand on the handle, H, and uh, with your index and uh, thumb fingers, you interact with the fingers holders, F1 and F2, also labeled C3 and C4 in this case. And the position orientation and grasping configurations are fully controlled from eight motors on the base. So we will now show that this platform has indeed one degree of freedom by performing its mobility analysis. So if you assume that all the cables are in tension, the platform mobility is equivalent to a mechanism with six, six triangular plates connected by seven one duff revolving joint. So we are interested in the mobility between C3 and C4, where we put our thumb and index. And uh, indeed, uh, if you assume the cable are in tension, you can see that uh, a virtual triangular plate is formed. The same thing for those three cables. So if we put all them together, we have six plate and seven uh, one duff virtual uh, join. Now we're interested in the mobility between P3 and P4. Uh, this is achieved by uh, three serial chain in parallel. Uh, one is just the handle itself, and the uh, other two are made of uh, three revolu a series of three revolu join. So if we make a topology graph, we can say that it's equivalent to a three leg uh, parallel mechanisms. So the mobility is simply the intersection of those three of the mobility of each leg. Uh, for the handle, it's only a one duff around the handle axis. And for the, the top uh, chain, uh, you see that all the cable intersect at C1, so that form a virtual spherical join. And uh, for the bottom chain, this is the same, but they intersect at C2. So the intersection of those three mobility is uh, simply the mobility of the handle, so the one degree freedom around this axis. This is the mobility between C3 and C4. So in order to control uh, this robot, we want first to uh, calculate the inverse position kinematic, which is uh, the length of the cable as a function of the position of the platform. The position in this case is defined by uh, x, y, z, the position of the middle of the handle, the orientation in the three axis, but also by the value rho, which represents the grasping. This is the seventh component of the vector p. And uh, from this vector, we want to calculate the vector q, which uh, has all the length uh, of the cables. So we need actually to find the position of the six attachment point uh, C1 to C6. So the platform is symmetrical in this YZ local plane, so that will make the calculation easier. C1 and C2, they are independent of the grasping value, so we can directly calculate them from the position of the handle. And C3 and C4, they are directly depending on the, depending on the grasping, so they are also easy to calculate. For C5 and C6, uh, they can be found at the intersection of a circle and uh, of radius LT and a sphere of radius LS. So imagine we want to calculate the position of C5. We can create a circle uh, around C1, which has a length a radius of LT5, and a sphere centered on C4, which has a radius of LS5. And 
the connection point C5 will be found at the intersection uh, of this circle and this sphere. We can do the same for the point C6 at the bottom. Now we want to calculate the statics. So we have two force vector space. Uh, one is the force on the platform, and the second one is the tension on the eight active cable. So in total, we have eight active cable, but also 10 passive cable. So we have 18 uh, tensions in total. So the, the dimension of the static matrix is uh, 18 columns. Uh, the number of rows correspond to the number of static equations, and for the handle, this this is six equations because we have the the three force equations, but also the three torque equations. But uh, on the remaining uh, attachment points, C3 to C6, we consider them as a point mass, and they only have three equations each. Therefore, we have uh, 18 equations, and uh, initially our static matrix is of dimension 18 by 18. To establish this initial uh, static matrix, we can construct a directed graph of all the cable. Uh, in this graph, the red cable are the active cable and the blue cable are the passive cables. And uh, each set of rows correspond to a number of static equations. So the first three rows correspond to the force on the handle, the next three rows correspond to the torque on the handle, and the remaining 12 rows correspond to the linear forces on point C4 to C6. However, in our design, cable cannot exert moment around the handle axis. So as you can see, uh, all the cable on the handle intersect on either on point C1 or point C2. So they cannot exert a moment around this axis, which means that only two rows of the rows 4, 5, 6 are independent. And this is actually a good thing because in the cable driven robot, you need at least one more cable than the number of static equations so that all the cable can be kept in tension. But we can still exert a torque around the axis by applying a linear forces on point C3 and C4. So the way it works is that C3 and C4, they can provide both the vertical torque around the handle and the grasping. Uh, they will provide torque when the forces uh, on C3 and C4 are in the same direction, and they will provide a grasping when the forces on C3 and C4 are in opposite direction. The remaining forces uh, must be zero in the other direction to not uh, introduce uh, unwanted force between the finger and uh, the rest of the hand. And uh, the sum of the force on C5 and C6, which are only there to transmit forces between cables, um, must be zero in all direction. This includes also the active cables that are attached to them. Uh, we can uh, apply the remaining forces on uh, C1 and C2 uh, on the handle. And after a few mathematical manipulation, uh, we obtain our uh, static matrix of dimension 17 by 18. This system of equations has an infinite number of solutions, and we are looking for a solution where all its elements uh, are a tension that is higher than the minimum tension for our cables. Since the static matrix is, a, is of dimensions uh, 17 by 18, its null space is of dimension 1. And in the static configuration inside the workspace, all the elements of this null space will be of the same sign. So by using the pseudo inverse, we can find a particular solution. Maybe this solution doesn't have all the elements uh, of the higher value than the minimum value, <clears throat> but then we can use the null space to move along um, the vector space of tension until we find a solution where all element, our elements are positive. For example, in the two degree, an example, simple example with two cables, uh, we can find a particular solution, and we want a solution where all the tension are higher than the minimum tension. So by using uh, the null space, uh, we can find uh, we can move along this null space until all tensions are uh, positive. For the inverse velocity kinematics, we use the power conservation principle. This means that the tension in the cables time the it time their speed uh, should be equal to the force on the platform time its speed. Uh, if we neglect friction. So all the energy that goes in the system should uh, go up. Um, now we're interested in direct relation uh, between the active cable and 
the force on the platform. So we want to remove the influence of the vector of the passive cable. To do this, we uh, split our static matrix into four components. And by after some manipulation, we obtain a direct expression of the force as a function of the tension in the active cables. Uh, then uh, we can use the power conservation principle to calculate the velocity relation. This also describes a small displacement. For the direct position kinematics, uh, in this case, we want to find the position of the device as a function of the length of the cable. And for this, we use, we use a Gauss-Newton algorithm. So first, we have a, position, a guess for the position. Then we, with the inverse position kinematic, we calculate a guess for the length of the cables. And then we compare this with uh, the reading of our sensors. And that gives us a difference in, in the length. And with the relation with small displacement, we calculate then the difference in uh, the position. And this is used as a second guess for the second iteration. And we repeat this process until we reach the uh, resolution that we want to achieve. Now that we have established our kinematic and static models, we can use those models to improve the design. So we use an aluminium frame of 700 millimeter wide. And uh, thanks to the symmetry of the design, we only add 14 design parameter to optimize. Uh, eight of those uh, are related to the position of the motor on the frame. And the remaining six are related to the length of the passive cables on the platform. We use a genetic algorithm to maximize an orientation inclusive workspace. So that is a workspace where you can uh, have, we can reach any orientation with a certain range. This was only used for optimi optimization, although, because inside this workspace, you can reach higher angular value. This is a table of the uh, workspace central boundaries. Then we built a prototype to validate those models. This is a one motor unit for one cable, and it is composed, of course, of a DC motor, and uh, you have a position sensor and uh, we use the EtherCAD protocol uh, to uh, synchronize all the motors uh, together. Uh, all the parts that support the motor and transmit the cable are 3D printed. And uh, this includes also the cable drum, the pulley, and the motor support. In order to limit friction in the system, we use bearing uh, for uh, the joint that support the motor and also for the joint that support the pulley. The handle was also fully 3D printed. So this is a video of uh, the device. So you interact with the palm of your hand and your thumbs and your index finger, and you can uh, move the whole platform in translation. You can also do uh, any rotation, and you can also do grasping. So you could imagine you could pick an object, move it somewhere else, and release it. And of course, you can combine all those movements at the same time. Then we wanted to use this prototype to evaluate the model that we previously developed. So we decided to evaluate the direct kinematic numerical procedure because it used all the models that uh, we developed, including the inverse position kinematic, inverse velocity kinematic, and the statics. Uh, we use uh, an external uh, electromagnetic tracker. So there were some tracker that were attached to different part of the platform, and they were connected to this uh, electromagnetic aurora uh, device that give us uh, external validation of the position orientation and grasping of the platform. So on the left, you can see the result for the position tracking compared to the kinematic calculation. And on the right, you can see the equivalent for the orientation and the grasping as well. Uh, the results were relatively good for a platform that uh, as a width of 700 millimeters. So for the position error, it was less than two millimeter. And for the angular error, it was 1.45 degree. In conclusion, we introduced the first seven of cable driven parallel robot that is made of a network of cables. We presented this kinematic and static models that are needed for his control. And then we designed, implemented, and evaluated the prototype to validate those models. 
We think that the concept of configurable cable platform can also be applied to any cable robot application that require grasping. Thank you, and I'll be happy to answer your question.